For our market recap segment, we are joined by Derek Hermish with Paragon Ag Advisors in Silver Lake, Kansas. Okay, Eric, we'll start here with the grain market first. You know, if you take if you take us back to, I don't know, a week, week and a half ago for both the corn and the soybean market, because that's where I want to focus on first. We've put about 90 cents back on the soybean market. We've put about 40 to 50 cents back on this corn market. So yeah, we've had our ups and downs, but overall we've kind of changed the paradigm and the attitude of where this grain market wants to go. And it almost seems like we're finally to a point where we're starting to flush a lot of the, the, the short bears out of this market and, and turn this market around a little bit. It really, it really has. I mean, this is, this is different than typical uh, harvest, post-harvest rallies that we've, you know, we've had here in the last few years. And, and, and like you said, you know, for basically a month and a half ago, uh, we, you know, we kind of found the lows around the 1st of September, which, which uh, lines up with how that has kind of worked the last several years. You know, somewhere first week or week before, week after the 1st of September, seem to find a low, get a little bit of a rally. But in a lot of years, you know, you get a little bit of a rally. And then after that, it just kind of runs sideways to lower. Carry comes out of the market. You know, harvest harvest goes along. Harvest pressure keeps thing under a lid. And uh, and this year, you know, bigger rallies we have managed. Like you said, 40 to 50 cents in the corn, and uh, and soybeans. You know, in that 90 cent mark. And there are there's some there's some big differences. Obviously, you know, the the one just you know flashing lights is you know harvest and uh, how late it is and. Looking at, you know, certainly being back of trend line yields, which is a difference than what we've had in the last couple of years. But as most farmers know, you know, everything that went in late and uh, just doesn't stand to reason that you're going to have, you know, another record harvest in the books. And and market's plenty aware of that. And, and the USDA reports, believe it or not, do, I mean, do reflect that, just not to the extent that, you know, somebody on the bullish side might be thinking that, it, you know, we'd have even more cutbacks to this point. But things that have really stuck out to me, where you were talking, you know, here in the last two weeks, you've seen some cutbacks enough in what our ending stock projections are for next year that are, you know, a little hazy, but they don't, we still don't have a bunch of stuff into those ending stocks for next year that we're going to do major, you know, export sales to China, which will matters, you know, if, if we get a deal done. But even right now we have, we're looking at 2019 projections for corn under 2 billion bushels, 1.9 billion bushels, and soybeans at 460 million bushels, which gets us back under the 500 million mark and gets us back into an area where we kind of used to fluctuate between, you know, 150 to 450 million before last year. And last year, this year that we were coming off of, our ending stocks ended at 930 million bushels. It's a huge swing on the soybean ending stocks. Again, these are projections and, uh, and subject to change as we get to the end of 2019. But just, just those round numbers of having corn underneath 2 billion bushels for a projected ending stock and soybeans under 500 million bushels just kind of lifts a weight off of the market shoulders that you're probably, and, and looking at a harvest that, you know, is at least questionable for what the yield is going to be this year, not, not a scenario where a big crop gets bigger. You have, you have a whole lot of different elements, you know, to work with and more than likely, not doesn't mean huge rallies from where we've already come because we've already had a good rally, but more volatility through the winter months, you would, you would stands to reason we will have more volatility in the next three to six months, much more so than we have had in the last two and three years past. Yep, that's a good point. Well, we've seen a lot of volatility over in the hog complex. Um, maybe not so much just yet in the cattle, but we have put a nice rally on the cattle. That's another one of those markets that's a lot like the soybean market and the corn market, where we just kind of go up and we bump up against some resistance, we fall back a little bit, we stay above support, we go back up and we try to test that resistance again. It almost gives us the feel, and I realize that we're starting to get awfully long in this cattle market, but I again, that's a market I think that is finally starting to turn the corner here just a little bit after that Tyson fire. It absolutely is, and the, the thing with the cattle market right now is that it has been, you know, since we finally found those lows, which, I, like a month, month and a half ago, you know, kind of similar thing. The the rally has been so so steady, it's scary, and it it's you know it's getting to the point now. I mean, you know, there's nothing fundamentally um, not bear, or bearish necessarily about the cattle market, and other than we have had such a big rally 
you know, off of those lows, which the lows were overdone, but, uh, but you get used to that back and forth motion, you know, in the cattle complex. But like you said, we've, we've tur turned a major corner in the cattle complex. I mean, it, it certainly does feel like the lows are in for, uh, for, for perhaps some time. I mean, when you just, you look at the numbers, the numbers we've been able to do from, uh, from a slaughter level and a demand level, just not just, you know, since the plant fire, how we've been able to keep slaughter up, but demand that we have had through the last year, even though, you know, our, our numbers did get bigger, but the last cattle on feed reports that we have shown have shown, you know, placements to be back a little bit. And you combine that with, if we get things, you know, that the plant uh, up and running, but even without it, you know, we've, we've been able to maintain through here. Certainly does feel like we've turned a corner. Okay, Derek. Well, um, that kind of sums things up for the week. Now it's wait and see what we're going to have next week. But how do we get a hold of you folks at Paragon Ag Advisors in the meantime, if we want to find out more about risk management? The best way is to give us a call. You can reach us at 888-452-8751. Otherwise, you can visit our website. That is myagadvisor.com. <music>